Next, I want us to discuss what it means for a function to be one-to-one. -one. So remember a function, um, it, in order for something to function, it has to work. So let's think back to our vending machine. Um, functions can be expressed as relations. They can be expressed as um, a graph. And remember what a function has is that each x has only one y, okay? So if I have x from x to y, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Each x has exactly one y in this representation and in this representation. It just so happens that in this case, that this y has two x's. So these are both functions, but only one of them has a special property of being one to one. A function from our domain to our target is said to be one to one if each x value has exactly one y value and each y value has exactly one x value. That's what's different. So a function, each x has exactly one y and in order to be a one to one function, each y also needs exactly one x. It's kind of easier if we look at this graph to see why this is one to one, right? I've got one x going to one y in every case. So i.e. f of a equals f of a squared, sorry, a sub one equals f of a sub two implies that a sub one equals a sub two for all choices of a sub one and a sub two in the domain. This is the formal definition. Um, I want you guys to think back to our vending machine. So we have exactly one x going to exactly one y. A function from a to b is on to if for every element in our target, an element A maps to it. So for example, here we have this graph. It's one to one because each X has exactly one Y value, but it's not onto because C has nothing that maps to it. Sad day. This function is not, is onto, okay, but it's not one to one because the C has two Y values. So not one to one, but it is on to because every element in our target was hit. A bijection, a bijection is a function that is both one to one and on to. So that example I did earlier, here we have a function that's one to one. Each X has a unique Y value and it's on to because, hi Bobby, did you catch a mouse? You're so good. Ooh. So it's a bijection because um, it is also onto fun stuff. I want to do a little refresher of function composition. This is something we did cover in college algebra. But if I have two functions and f and g are functions, then we can compose the functions by substituting in g of x into x in f of x. So let's let f of x equal 2x and f of, sorry, and g, yes, we hear you, Bobby. And g of x equal negative 2x plus 4. If I want to take the function composition of these two functions, I'm going to take f of g of x. So that means I'm substituting g of x into f of x. So I have two, that's my f, of x, but now instead of x, I have g of x. So I have two times negative two x plus four. So the function composition would be negative four x plus eight. That's a good example of function composition. Let's do a couple more examples just so this, we remember function composition entirely. So let's let f of x equal g of x, f of x equal x squared and g of x equal x plus three. If I wanna take f composed with g of x, that means I'm gonna take f of x, which is x squared, but instead of squaring x, I'm squaring x plus three. 
Remember, this is something we would have to FOIL out, right? We can't distribute that exponent across addition. So I'm going to get x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. So I have x squared plus 6x plus 9. Now if I want to know f composed with g of 2, I'm going to take 2 squared. I'm substituting in 2 for x. 2 squared plus 6 times 2 plus 9. So 4 plus 12 plus 9, our answer would be 25. All right, now I want to take g composed with f. Remember, function composition is not associative. So if I take g composed with f, I'm going to have g of f of x, and that's going to be x squared, but now my x is f of x, plus 5. So I have 4x minus 1 times 4x minus 1 plus 5. I have to FOIL this out. 16x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 1 plus 5. I get that 16x squared minus 8x plus 6. And then in order to find g composed with f of negative 2, I'm going to go ahead and substitute that in. So I have 16, negative 2 squared minus 8 times negative 2 plus 6. So negative 2 squared is 4. 16 times 4 is 64 plus 16 plus 6. I have 64 plus 22, so my answer is 86. Friendly reminder about factorials, okay? So the factorial function of a natural number is the product of n and all the natural numbers below it. This is denoted n squared. So if I had 2 factorial, that'd be 2 times 1. If I had 3 factorial, that would be um, 3 times 2 times 1. 7 factorial would be 7 times 2 times, sorry, 7 times 6 times 5. 4, 3, 2, 1. Blast off. Okay. And we denote factorial with this lovely little explanation point because it's so exciting. So why don't we go ahead and solve a couple of factorial values. So if I have 3 factorial, that's 3 times 2 times 1, which gives me 6. If I have 2 factorial times 3 factorial, that's 2 times 1 times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, 2 times 1 is 2, times 3 is 6, times 2 is 12. Next, if I have 2 times 3 factorial, remember PEMDAS, we need to simplify what's in our parentheses first. So that would give me 6 factorial, which is... 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 times 4 is 120. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 times 4 would be, give me 120. 360, 720. So my answer is 720. Friendly note that you do have a factorial button in your calculator. Um, but remember to make sure you follow the rules of PEMDAS. Okay, next I'm going to take 4 factorial over 2 factorial. That gives me 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1. The 2 and the 1 are going to cancel, so I have 12. Next, if I have 4 divided by 2 factorial, I need to simplify what's inside the parentheses first. That'd give me 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1, which is just 2. So here's the section 1.3 homework. Um, I have already made a key of this, so as soon as I start receiving some of your guys' homework, I'm going to send you the key so you can check your answers. Remember that you can submit uh, your work to Amsden or online through Lantern.